All right, guys. Uh, so I am uh, going to just kind of uh, <clears throat> go over how I changed out the screen on a Game Boy Color. Uh, so I recorded the video that we're seeing here earlier, um, and I kind of you know cut it down, uh, sped up some parts, just to um, for to make this not take too long. Uh, I did this chain. I did this trade out. Uh, it took me probably a, a grand total of 50 minutes or so because um, I've never done it before. I think doing it in the future will probably take closer to 20 or 30 minutes at the most. Uh, <clears throat> and I've seen videos where people do this in like 10 minutes as well. But this is my first time doing it. I also wasn't following a guide at the time though I had watched a video of someone doing it before. So anyway, um, what I do, uh, what the point of this mod is to take out the screen of the Game Boy Color and replace it with a uh, backlit LCD. I was using the backlit TFT LCD mod bought from retromodding.com. It is a just a straight plug and play, uh, what's called a drop-in LCD, no solder. Um, so anyway, so uh, to catch up with the video there, I was removing the case. So the outer screws on the Game Boy Color are the standard Nintendo Tri-Wing. And so I have a 1.5-millimeter uh, Tri-Wing screwdriver that I use for that. Uh, at this point, uh, you've got some other screws on the motherboard. Oh, before I do that, first I'm uh, removing the ribbon cable. And so there's two little locks on either side of the, the monitor ribbon cable right there, or the screen ribbon cable. Uh, so you just ease those out, and then you want to gently pull that ribbon cable out of the housing there. So I'm trying to be extra careful with it, probably being overly, overly careful, but the screen in this Game Boy Color is perfectly functional, and so I wanted to save it. So uh, at this point, the other screws are uh, Phillips. And so I've got a Phillips um, 00. I think actually the screwdriver I'm using there is a Phillips triple zero, which is a tiny bit too small, uh, but it still works. And so you've got to remove these screws to, to pull the, the motherboard, or well, really the board, the, the whole PCB, because the, the Game Boy is really... Game Boy Color is really mostly just one big PCB, and then there's another PCB um, under that capacitor there on the bottom left that you can see. That's be the yeah, be the bottom left when you're holding it facing you. Uh, so what happened at this point was that I found one of the screws um, was really really tight. And so I got out the proper double zero bit for that and discovered that it wasn't working. And I was getting worried that I was going to strip it here pretty soon. Uh, so you can see me kind of thinking things over. Uh, I tried the, the, the triple zero again, which there was really no reason for. And I could feel it turning in there. Um, and you really don't want to strip screws when you're messing with uh, well, anything, but especially these electronics. So I have another double zero there. I thought maybe it might be just slightly different size and might work. It didn't work either. So then I kind of felt it like, oh, well, can, is this screw necessary to remove? Yes, it is. And so um, I think I have a cut coming up here. Um, at this point, I actually left the shop for a couple of hours to go run an errand. And so I, uh, sorry, I was looking at the cat. So um, anyway, I came back and uh, and was able to get it out, which I think we'll cut to here in a second, unless I posted the raw video file or something, but I don't think so. So what I ended up doing to get it out is definitely not the optimal solution that a lot of people would go with. Um, there is special electronics safe uh, lubricant um, I'm going to use WD-40, which people online will tell you don't do. Um, I've done it more than once before. Uh, so what I do is I take a Q-tip, and away from my work surface, I squirt just a little bit of WD-40 on that, and then I use the Q-tip and kind of just 
push it around the screw, as you can see there, uh, to kind of get the WD-40 to go in um, and kind of soak in uh, to the, uh, the hole that the screw is in. And so I got a little bit more WD-40 on it to get a little bit more in there. So I don't want to squirt WD-40 into electronics. Though if I did, honestly, I would just need to um, clean it off, uh, which I mean I could do with some some uh, rubbing alcohol. But anyway, so this is now where I left and came back two hours later. And when I come back, the screw uh, still didn't want to turn with either of those drivers. So I grabbed a different size driver and was able to get it off without stripping the screw at all. I uh, ended up just using a, a much bigger Phillips head screwdriver and it kind of got the grip right. Uh, with the screen, to get it to get the screen out, it's glued down. And the best way to do that is take the Game Boy and just take the housing and gently kind of rock it back and forth, just like bend it very, very gently back and forth. And you can hear like the cracking sound of the glue coming free of the housing. And then I used a little spudger to pull that off. And so that is going in protective bubble wrap and will be a spare screen for if I find a, a Game Boy Color that uh, has a broken screen. So at this point I could also um, remove the plastic lens and put a glass lens in there. That would increase the sale value. Uh, but the plastic lens on this Game Boy Color was in just amazing shape. There's not a scratch or a smudge to be seen, so I decided not to. Uh, the X-Acto knife was me opening the uh, packaging of the um, screen that I bought from Retromati. And so I should have cut a little bit of the dead air here, but there we go. So here I am unwrapping it. Um, and I hold up that upside down because actually I had my camera upside down and I uh, didn't think about flipping the video until after I came into it. There we go. Game Boy Color backlit LCD, it just says. So um, someone online asked me, uh, someone on Reddit asked me if I used the, uh, when I, I posted pictures and stuff with this earlier, uh, if I used uh, Funny Playing's one. So Funny Playing is, a, I guess, a brand. Um, I did not. The one I used was the one that Retromani sells, and it did not have any branding on it except for their sticker. So I don't know if it is the same one that Funny Playing designed, or if it's a copycat, or what. Um, I do know it, it came shipped to me from Canada, which is where Retromani, uh, I guess, where they're located. Uh, but, you know, that doesn't mean it wasn't made. Uh, in some Chinese factory. I, in fact, I assume that's where it was made. Uh, anyway, so I'm taking it apart here, and I thought my hands were in frame, uh, so I can't really see it. That was the, the original LCD. I had laid it to the side there to compare them. So there you can see that's the back of the LCD and the ribbon cable coming off of it. Uh, well, it's a little flexible PCB, and then the ribbon cable coming off of it. And then right now I'm holding up the camera, can't see, I'm holding up the other part of it. It also came with plastic spacers, um, a little sticker. Oh, what I was doing there is putting the original back in the packaging of the new one, since it was good uh, packaging to keep it safe. And I was about to show you the retro modding sticker that came with it, but that sticker is actually, turns out I put it on my phone. so. There's the, the sticker that they sent me. Well, there you go. So thank you, Retromani. All right. Uh, so at this point, uh, those are the little spacers that go on it. So there's three of them. Uh, I ended up not using the little one. I don't know if I was how it was supposed to fit in there. Um, it may have been meant for if you're using the custom cases, because I know the custom cases have a slightly different uh, plastic rim around the screen but so the I put that one in there um, I because I've seen someone else do that online before so like I said you can see my phone there to the left I took a just a picture of what it looks like when it's all connected
to make sure that I oriented everything together correctly before I put it in backwards or something. Uh, so you see there, I'm putting my fingers directly on the screen. You don't want to do that. That's a mistake. Um, I ended up taking it and lightly uh, cleaning it uh, with a cloth before I ended up putting it in, which I think got cut. So you've got this second piece here, and it has a um, housing for that rib for this ribbon cable. And so you want to just gently slide that in. And it wasn't quite sliding, so uh, you got you have to lift up the little flap, which is the little locking mechanism. I, I know it has a name. So I put it under my little magnifying glass there so I could see if I was putting it in the right opening. And it turned out I was trying to slide it under the opening. So that's what that was for. So slide that in there like so. And once it's, it's in good and firmly but very gently, then just take your finger and close that little locking mechanism. And now it's secure. Still fragile. You don't want to just you know, jerk it around. Um, so at this point, I really would have done well to look up a video. Um, there's a sticker, a non-conductive clear sticker that is supposed to go on that green PCB on the side that has all the components so that it doesn't arc to that metal shield there. And instead, I put it on that metal shield, which is fine, but that's not the way, uh, when I went back and looked at the video, that wasn't the way they did it in the video. Um, and so it doesn't quite fit, you'll see, because that green PCB is a little bit smaller than that metal shield. And so the sticker actually overlaps off the edge of the metal shield because of that. And then that will actually get in the way a little bit um, when I put it, when I put the guides in, but I'm able to get around that without any problems. So uh, definitely recommend uh, watching a YouTube video of how to do this while you're doing it. Um, but I, I wanted to, I knew this one was uh, an easy one. I wanted to kind of go into it just having watched one ahead of time, just so I could kind of work my way through it instead of uh, just watching step by step. So this is some, um, it's called Kaplan tape. It's some uh, non-conductive tape. Uh, and so I don't think that black part that I just taped over is actually conductive, but I wanted to be double, double sure. So, because you don't want any arcing. Um, I'll, I'll end up, again, you'll see me at the end, I'll use it again on the back of that PCB there. And again, I don't know if that's actually necessary, but it doesn't hurt. The Kaplan tape isn't going to hurt anything. So, so I'm trying to make sure I get it lined up just right. That was actually, I took it and wiped it off. And now I'm trying to be extra careful about not getting fingerprints on it. If you do get fingerprints on it, I mean, you know, it's going to be almost imperceptible probably, but still. So this is what I was talking about. The clear tape that I put on the wrong part there is blocking access for this. So I've got to, instead of just dropping it in, I've got to kind of slide it in there. But that's fine. I was able to use a little spudger to get it in place. And so it actually ended up just fine. So at this point, you're going to fold it. You're going to fold, carefully fold that flexible PCB up there. By the way, you'll notice I'm keeping the Game Boy Color mainboard attached to the case by the speaker. The speaker kind of has, it clips in, the speaker kind of clicks in to the housing down there. And then right there, I pulled it out on accident, which is fine, completely fine. The next time I do this, I'll just completely pull the board off. It was, I, I thought maybe it was glued in. And so I didn't want to pull it off. And then it turns out it's just sitting in there. It just is a really tight fit. I knew it was uh, one, one of the, another very easy mod you can do to Game Boy DMG, pocket, color, light, whatever, uh, is the speaker that comes with all the different models of Game Boy is a 5-watt speaker. And the speaker in a Nintendo DS uh, and DS Lite is a 10-watt speaker. Um, and the uh, they're completely compatible. So you can replace the speaker in this with that 10-watt speaker from a DS Lite if you have a junk one 
which if you're building Game Boy macros, which I'm going to be doing on this stream probably in the next week, um, maybe in the next couple of days, uh, you'll end up, usually you only save one speaker from the DS Lite whenever you're transforming it into a macro and then you have a speaker left over and you can take that speaker and put it into a Game Boy Color. Uh, the problem is that it doesn't fit the housing, so you've got to clip away at the housing so it will fit in there. So now I'm replacing the screws and put in some batteries, put in game, uh, a game, and there you go. And I can tap, tap, the side, tap over the IR sensor right there and change the brightness. So it's got five stages of brightness. So pretty cool little mod. Very, very simple to do. No soldering, just plug and play. And that is it. That was my very first mod. It was on easy mode. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed it. Uh, I know no one was watching live, but hopefully, hopefully you catch the clip. Uh, and I'll also post this on my YouTube uh, username. There is Carusetta without the X. So, till then, thanks. See you later.